This is a tutorial about using rules to test the validity of syllogisms. In a previous tutorial, I said that if you know the mood and figure of a syllogism, there is a way to determine the validity of the syllogism at a glance. This is possible by applying six rules to the syllogism. If it passes all six, the syllogism is valid. If it fails any one of the rules, it is invalid. Knowing the mood and figure of a syllogism, along with the properties of the four standard claims, provides the basis for applying the rules. There are six rules for testing the validity of syllogisms, two about distribution, three about the use of negative claims, and one about inferring particular conclusions from universal premises. Here are the six rules. We'll go over each rule with examples. First I'll review what the mood and figure tell us about syllogisms, and then apply the first two rules. A term is distributed when it says something about all of the members of a category and it is undistributed when it doesn't say something about all of a category. The A claim says something about all of its subject term, but not all of its predicate term. So we say that the A claim distributes its subject, but not its predicate. The E claim distributes both its subject and predicate. The I claim doesn't distribute either one, and the O claim distributes its predicate, but not its subject. Remember that the mood of a syllogism is just the three letters of the types of claims that make up the argument. In this example, the major premise of the syllogism is all ducks are things that fly, which is an A claim. Minor premise is some things that fly have blue feathers, which is an I claim. And the conclusion is some things with blue feathers are ducks, which is also an I claim. So the mood of this syllogism is AII. -I. But I said it is possible to determine the validity of a syllogism by just knowing its mood and figure. In other words, without knowing the terms themselves. Just knowing that the major premise is an A claim doesn't tell us where the predicate term appears. The predicate term in the conclusion must appear in the major premise, but it can appear in either the subject or the predicate position. The figure of a syllogism indicates the position of the middle term. There are four possible combinations. We only need to consider the major and minor premises since the middle term never appears in the conclusion in a well-formed syllogism. Each combination is given a number, always considered in the same order. So a syllogism can be assigned one of four numbers identifying the position of the middle term. In this example, the mood of the syllogism is EAE -E, and its figure is 1, indicated by the dash and the number of the figure. Now let's apply the rules. The first rule is the middle term must be distributed in at least one premise. Suppose we have an AII4 syllogism. In the fourth figure, the middle term is in the predicate position in the major premise and the subject position in the minor premise. Here I've added back the full statements for illustration, but really all you need to know is the mood and figure. The rule says that the middle term must be distributed in at least one premise. It isn't distributed in the major premise because only terms in the subject position of the A claim are distributed. It isn't in the minor premise because neither of the terms are distributed in an I claim. This violates the rule so we know the syllogism is invalid. In fact, any syllogism that is in the form AII4 will be invalid, no matter what terms are used. Validity is determined by form, and applying the first rule shows that any argument with this form is invalid. Let's look at the second rule. It says that for a syllogism to be valid, if a term is distributed in the conclusion, it must be distributed in a premise. Here's an example of a syllogism in the AIO mood and in the first figure. The mood tells us that the conclusion is an O claim, and we know that O claims distribute the predicate, but not the subject. The predicate term is in the predicate position in the major premise of a figure 1 syllogism. To satisfy rule 2, the predicate term must be distributed, but the major premise is an A claim in figure 1, and A claims don't distribute the predicate and the predicate term is in the predicate position. There is a term that is distributed in the conclusion, but not in a premise, so the syllogism is invalid. Let's look at rules 3 through 5 when we just know the mood and figure. These rules are about the relationship between negative claims and validity. Let's apply rule 3 to an EIE2 syllogism. Rule 3 says a syllogism cannot have two negative premises. The major premise is an E claim, which is negative. 
but the minor premise is an I claim, which is affirmative. Since only one of the premises is negative, the syllogism doesn't violate Rule 3. Let's apply Rule 4. It says that a negative premise must have a negative conclusion. The major premise is an E claim, which is negative, and the conclusion is an E claim, which is also negative. So the argument doesn't violate Rule 4. Rule 5 says that a negative conclusion must have a negative premise. This syllogism does have a negative conclusion, and the major premise is also negative, so the syllogism doesn't violate Rule 5. Now let's look at Rule 6, which deals with particular conclusions. It says that two universal premises cannot have a particular conclusion. Since the conclusion is an E claim, which is universal, we don't have to worry about this rule. But if the conclusion had been a particular, in other words an I or O claim, the syllogism wouldn't have violated the rule anyway because the minor premise is a particular. We started applying rules to this syllogism beginning with rule 3, but to be valid it must satisfy all six. So let's apply the first two. Rule 1 says that the middle term must be distributed in at least one premise. In a figure 2 syllogism, the middle term is in the predicate position of both the major and minor premises. Because the major premise is an E claim, and it distributes both the subject and predicate terms, the syllogism doesn't violate Rule 1. In fact, whenever one of the premises is an E claim, you know the syllogism will satisfy Rule 1. However, since the conclusion distributes both terms, both the subject and predicate must be distributed in the premise. In this example, the minor premise is an I claim, which doesn't distribute either term. Since the subject term is distributed in the conclusion, but not in the minor premise, the argument violates Rule 2, so it is invalid. To recap, here are the six rules for the validity of syllogisms. With practice, you will be able to apply these rules just knowing the mood and figure of an argument and determining its validity. Remember, if only one rule is violated, the argument is invalid. So, as soon as you spot one rule violation, you don't need to apply the others.